All right. Good morning, everybody, and praise the Lord. And thank you guys for joining us this morning for uh, Fresh Fire Friday. Fresh, Fresh Fire Friday. Um, coming to you live. Let me turn all this volume off. Uh, the Hotel Edition. Amen. Uh, coming to you live uh, from the hotel. We're at the uh, conference, the um, Gathering of Eagles. Uh, the uh, convocation that we're having here in Montgomery. And man, it has been what a night. My God, what a night. Uh, Bishop Mixon taught last night, man, and he taught a word straight from the Lord. And it was just such a blessing. Um, and it is just a blessing. And, and I'm just telling you, man, if you're in the greater Montgomery area, man, you need to get here. When I tell you you need to get here, man, you need to get here. That 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 word last night was such a blessing, and, and it challenged me uh, in so many ways, man. Get ready, Eastgate. I'm coming back with some information, man. We about to do ministry on a whole nother level. So uh, it was very very exciting. It was it was just an awesome time. Uh, things that I learned last night, I'm I'm very eager eager uh, to apply them. Y'all have to y'all have to kind of have to excuse me. I'm trying to get adjusted here. I had to. Um, I'm working with my makeshift stand um, camera holder today, so uh, I'm just trying to get everything adjusted. So I'm just telling you, man, if you're in a greater Montgomery area, if you if you are a pastor, if you lead a ministry, if you are a part of a ministry, man, you need to get here. You need to be here tonight because the information that you're going to receive uh, at this conference it, it's you it, it's just it's just invaluable. You can't even. You can't even begin to imagine the stuff that you're going to receive and how it's going to going to just revolutionize your your ministry and the way you're doing ministry and 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 make you take a fresh look at the things that you're doing. And so you need to get here tonight. You need to get here tonight. You need to be here tomorrow. Uh, we have dynamic speakers lined up. Uh, even I myself, little old me, is going to be a part of the conference tonight. And, uh, and and I'm telling y'all right now, man, you need to get here. Uh, Bishop Mixon show enough blessed us last night. Um, he he set the tone and the tenor for the whole. I mean, he set the culture and the atmosphere for the whole weekend. So I, I'm just telling you, man, you need to get here. Montgomery, Alabama. We we're, we're at Lighthouse International Fellowship, 124 Mendel Parkway, here in the beautiful city of Montgomery, Alabama. Get here if you. If you, I'm telling you, if you're in any leadership position or if you just go to church and you just lead you, you need to be here. I'm just telling you, you need to be here. If you own a business, you need to be here. This, this information is not just going to help you uh, in, in your ministry, in your church, man. This is going to help you in life. And that my inner okay there we go i'm on the hotel's internet um so y'all gonna have to forgive me if i go out and come back in um i thought that the, the strength was stronger but apparently it is not as strong as i thought that it was and if it keeps going out i'm probably gonna have to change devices well anyway let me just go ahead and get started with what i gotta do today uh, because if i do that then i won't really have to worry about everything keep going in and out so I'm just saying to you, if you, man, if you're connected to Kingdom Agenda Fellowship, especially, you need to be at you need to be at convocation um, this weekend. You need to be here, and you, and you need to make that investment not only in yourself but in your ministry uh, to get here and to be a part of what you say that you are a part of. You need to be here to be a part of what you say that you are a part of. And you just can't be saying that you are a part of something that you won't invest in and that you won't, you know, spend any time in and you won't use any of your resources to get better and to get here. Kind of what we're going to be talking about today uh, for just a few minutes. Uh, I only have a few minutes uh, and then we'll go ahead and go. I, I want to I do two things. Number one, 
And I got to look down at, 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 at the scripture because I want to make sure I say it right. Uh, from Mark chapter number four, verse 24 and 25, the Lord has had me in this place. I've been digging in this place uh, for such a long time. Um, that and, and I can't get away from it because every time I look at it and I look at it in a different version of the Bible, it kind of brings me back. There's more information that I glean from it. So listen to this. And he says to them, be careful what you're hearing. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you and more besides will be given to, given to you who hear. Verse number 25, for to him who has will more be given. And from him who has nothing, even what he has will be taken away by force, by force. This is the Amplified, the classic edition. If you read it in a regular Amplified version, it, it, in verse number 25, it'll tell you that the person that refuses to learn, that has an unteachable heart, will lose everything that they have. And, and that's what we are nowadays. We, we, are, we, we are working with with. with with, with people who don't believe that they need to be taught. And I'm telling you, man, being taught is very important. I need you to listen. Listen, let's go back up for a minute. Then I'm, I'm, I'm going to get into the heart of what, what I have to say. And if you come tonight, you, you're going to hear the scripture again. I'm telling you right now. The measure of thought and study. Listen, God said the measure of thought and study. Study, the measure of thought and study, not the measure of your reading, your ability to read, but your ability to study and your ability to think on the thing. This is the only thing that's going to change your mind. See, our minds have to be renewed and transformed. The only way your mind is going to be renewed and transformed is if you get new information and you need new correct information. So you just can't be hearing from everybody and thinking you're getting good word. Okay, I'm going to say that again. You can't be hearing from everybody and thinking you getting good word. I mean, you, you everybody is not giving good word. That's just like you can't go everywhere. And, you know, I like steak. So, you know, they, they tell me sometimes when I go to get a steak, they'd be like, oh, you, you, you know, you stuck up about steak. I know what a good steak is. So when I go and eat steak and you tell me it's a good steak, when I taste it, I mean, it's got to be a good steak. I can't go anywhere and get a good steak. I mean, there's a Waffle House across the street from me. I'm not expecting to go to the Waffle House and get a good steak. Now, they may have a steak that you may say is good, but I may not say it's good because it's not quality. And what I'm saying is that, look, you, you got to be careful because what you're hearing is determined what you're getting. Okay, I, I can't say that any more simple. What you're hearing is determined what you're getting. And I don't mean like, you know, what you're getting from the person you're hearing. I mean what you're getting in life is determined by what you're hearing. I, I taught a message Wednesday night at Bible study about how to uncomplicate your complicated life. And it's simply because we don't have good word, things get complicated. See, when you don't have good word, what happens is you look at everything as, as it is the most difficult situation in the world and really is not the most difficult situation in the world because God always has a word for it. God always has an answer. And what happens is that if you don't know the answer and you don't know the God who can answer, what you do is you walk around in darkness. It's like walking around with a blindfold on in a wilderness that you're not familiar with. You keep running into stuff and thinking you're getting somewhere and you're really not. All you're doing is messing up your life. And we got to get to a point to where we start listening. We, we start sitting down and we start being taught the unadulterated word of God. Listen, folk get confused because it, nowadays we confuse being churchy with being holy. Okay, I'm going to say that again. We confuse being churchy with being holy. We think because we churchy, we holy. L listen, there's a difference. If the Lord says, be ye holy for I am holy, then he sets the standard for holiness. Not, you know, I'm not arguing with any, any the way anybody does church, but I just need you to understand that if, 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 if the Lord is saying, be ye holy for I am holy, he sets the standard for holiness. It's not about, you know, all of this other stuff that we do. That's great. If that's what y'all do in your church and I'm not against that, that is great. But at some point, somebody going to have to sit down and be taught. Because you can't be holy if you don't know the one who is holy. If you don't know the one who's setting the standard, how can you be, how can you meet the standard? And how can you be holy if you don't know the standard setter? 
Come on now. I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm just trying to, to teach us something here. I'm trying to teach us something here. Listen, th there was something because um, when we had our last roundtable at, at Eastgate uh, with, with me and Apostle Moore, uh, he, he, he talked about virtue. He talked about virtue. And that thing got stuck in my, it got stuck in my spirit because I, I was like, okay, virtue, 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 virtue. I know y'all remember when the woman with the issue of blood, when she, when she touched the hem of Jesus's garment. Now, now I've read, you know, some historical accounts about this and, and, and it was believed that when, when the Messiah would come, that he would have healing in his wings or in the, in the fringes of his garment, there would be healing. So, uh, if, if that, if that part is true, then she actually just acted on faith. Okay. Y'all, we, we're going to catch that next week. She acted on faith because she believed something and she touched the hem of his garment because she believed that when Messiah came, first of all, she had to believe that he was Messiah. And then if you study this lady's history and her account, this lady had been everywhere trying to get healed. And because she had an issue of blood, it made her an outcast in society. It made her an outcast in society. And she had gone to all of the little, little healing doctors. But see, it was her faith that made her whole and her faith and belief in Jesus Christ. And so watch this, watch this. Because he said when she touched him, he said virtue left his body. Virtue left his body. I was concerned about this because I was like, okay, I understand what it means to be virtuous. But what does it mean when Jesus said that virtue left his body? So in, in, in that passage in Mark chapter 4, in the Amplified Classic Edition of the, Bible, of the Bible, listen to this right here, listen to this right here, listen to this. Uh, it says that, 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 that um, I, got, I, got, I don't really want to read, it said the measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge. Watch this. Man, I, listen, I had to look this thing up. I had to look it up because I, I needed to know what... What does thou mean by virtue and thought? And this word virtue is, it is, it is basically a continuation of a moral thought or a or continuation of a, of a, it is a continuation of a, a, of a principle or a moral thought. That's virtue. Watch this. Watch this. Man, listen to this right here. Man, I'm so excited. I'm in a hotel. I'm trying not to shout, but I'm so excited. Think about this thing. This lady need, needed healing. Watch this. She needed healing. So she connected to the one who had the healing, the, the, the thought that if I get to him, he can heal me. That's right, Apostle. That if 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 I could get to the one who has the healing, what's inside of him will flow into the inside of me. Come on, somebody. What's inside of him will flow to the inside of me. But she had to first have faith to believe that he was able to do what she believed that he could do. My God, I'm getting excited and, I, and I've left my point that I was supposed to be making today. I'm on to something else. So, so listen to what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm saying, man. You Listen, you can't have a virtuous thought without study. Are y'all hearing me? You got to know the one. Listen, God is his word and his word is God. You can't know him apart from his word. You can't know the Lord apart from his word. So stop telling me you know God and you don't know his word because you can't know him apart from his word. And if you don't know his word, you don't know him. And if you don't know him, you're going to find yourself in a whole lot of trouble because he is the only one that can bring you out. He is your strong deliverer. And if you don't know the deliverer, how are you ever going to be delivered? And I tell people all the time when, when you are fighting against God, who's going to help you? If God is your only help and you fight him, man, who you think going to come to your rescue? God is your helper. He's the only one that can help you. And if you fight him by disobeying his word, by not knowing his word, who is going to help you? And, and I've been trying to get this across, man. This, this, is, this is my major theme. I'm driving in Eastgate this year. Listen, 
You need you need to study the word. You need word. You need to be in the word. You need to be a word person. Listen, all of this, this virtue, this thought, this process, this thought process is going to bring good things back to you. This whole process is going to bring things back to you because what you will do is, I, you know, this is my word I like to use. You have tapped into something that will continuously flow into you. You talking about Jehovah Jireh being your provider, you get this thought in this study. And once you get this thought in this study, here's the thing. You will continue it and you'll get in the lane to know that everything I need can be accessed through Messiah. Everything I need can be accessed through the Lord. Everything I need, he already has. See, if you don't have, if you don't study and get the proper thought process, you won't know this. You won't know this. And then you'll struggle through life and thinking that life is more difficult than it really is. Listen, even 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 being a pastor, I learned this. I, listen, it took me a while to learn this, and I hope that pastors learn this. Listen, when I first started pastoring, the people that I that I was around, the pastors that I were around was around, they made me think that pastoring was going to be the hardest thing that any person has ever done. I went, when God first called me to pastor, I'm talking about I, when, when God first gave me the word that one day I would be a pastor. I was gifted to be a pastor. Man, I started sharing that with other, you know, with other people who were pastors because I was looking for people to pour into me. Man, instead, what they poured into me, I'm, I'm just going to be honest with you, they poured a whole lot of negative stuff to, into me. So I thought pastoring equaled struggle. I thought pastoring equals struggle. And so, you know, I was looking for the struggle in everything. Y'all hear me? And when I tell you, I was looking for the struggle in everything because I felt like you weren't doing it right if you weren't struggling. You weren't, you were not doing it right if you were not struggling. But what I found out is that when you try and go in your own power and do this thing of your own accord, you're going to struggle. Okay, let me, let me go on and tell you now, you're going to struggle. If you try and do this in your own power and of your own accord, you are going to struggle. Because, listen, God never meant for this thing to be this difficult. We just don't rely on him enough. We don't rely on him enough, and so we're trying to do it in our own strength. Listen, I knew I was going to get back to my point. I knew I was going to get back to my point. Oh, man, I ain't got much time, but I'm about to get back to my point. Listen, let me go and give you, let me give you my subject for tonight. Let me give you my subject for tonight because I'm, I'm, I'm super excited about it. I'm just going to give you my subject, and then I'm going to move on to my other point. My subject is, is uh, tonight is becoming the church the power of fellowship. Becoming the church, the power of fellowship. That, that's my subject for the night. You got to be there to find out. That's my teaser. That's my mid, that's my mid teaching uh, teaser right there. That's my commercial. Becoming the church, the power of of fellowship. Man, you got you got to come get it. Got to come get it. Now let, let me let me get y'all to this thing right here about about in life when you start struggling through life. I want y'all to hear this. I want y'all to hear this and I want y'all to get this plainly and then we're about to be out. Listen to this right here. So, when Noah when Noah um when Noah began to build the ark, when God spoke to Noah and told Noah to build the ark, I think sometimes we forget that there were other people who lived in that time where Noah lived. Noah wasn't building this ark in isolation. Y'all get that? Noah wasn't building this ark in isolation. His family was there. He had other people there. I'm quite sure he had relatives there. And he's doing something and talking about something that no man has ever seen before. No man has ever seen before. But watch this. When God gives you a plan, when God gives you a plan, y'all forgive me, I knew it was going to happen. I knew it was going to happen. Uh, my makeshift stand. My makeshift stand. Y'all work with me, work with me. When God gives you a plan, when God gives you a plan, you got to work the plan that God has given you, regardless of what everybody else is thinking about you and regardless of what everybody else is saying about you. When God gives you a plan, you have to work the plan that God has given you. You have to work the plan that God has given you. And sometimes, as in the case of Noah, God asked Noah to build the ship out of wood that was hard to find. Okay, there are going to be some resources that God is going to tell you to use. They are going to be hard to find. And the reason why they're going to be so hard to find is because they're that precious. They're that precious. And, and I'm telling you right now, when you're building your circle, when you're surrounding yourself with the people that are going to help you get to the next level, they are going to be hard to find. They're going to be hard to find. But don't ever stop looking. 
Don't and, and, and listen, as long as you remain teachable, you'll always find the people that God has designed to help you to get to where you need to be. As long as you remain teachable, when you become unteachable, you're never going to get to the place because you're not following the plan. And the plan that God has outlined and set for you has to be followed exactly the way that God tells you to follow it. Because when you follow the plan, just like with Noah, listen, watch this. When you, when you, when you find the material, when you build it the way that God has told you to build it, when you're saying stuff that no one has ever heard before, it had never rained before. Noah's telling people it's going to rain. When you're doing all of this stuff and you're saying stuff that people have never heard before, people will look at you like you have lost your ever loving mind. They, they will look at you like you have lost your mind. But always remember this. I got a plan from God. I got a plan from God. I got a purpose. I got to accomplish what God has set forth for me to accomplish because this is the only thing that's going to save me. Oh, my God. Come on, y'all. I don't mean as in save you as going to heaven. I mean save me from a life of struggle. Save me from a life of trouble. Save me from things that, you know, otherwise would consume me and destroy me. When I build the way that God would have me to build, build your life the way God would have you to build it. Build your business the way that God would have you to build it. Build your family the way that God would have you to build it. And sometimes... Listen to this. Sometimes following God's blueprint, it seems like things are not working the way that God wants you to work it. But if you just continue to build the way that God has told you to build, the results are going to be well worth it. But watch this. Listen to this and catch this point. Noah, when he, when he built according to God's instructions and God's directions, when he built it, he was able to weather the storm. Not only was he able to weather the storm, and I'm telling you, when you build your life the way that God has told you to build it, you're going to be able to weather these storms that come your way. Listen, they, man, I used to be so confused about who God was when people told me, you know, either, man, I listen, I, I had this thing embedded in me. You either, what is it? You either um, in a storm, coming out of a storm, and going into a storm. And I said, did not Jesus say, peace be still? I mean, I was confused. Man, that thing confused me. I went to people. I was like, hey, tell me about this storm stuff. I mean, I, I know this guy that wrote this book called Minimizing Your Storms. I mean, I, 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 know, this, I, I know this guy that wrote this book called Minimizing Your Storms. Boy, I wish he would have had some copies to bring with him today. Listen, um, listen, d d listen, you, you, peace be still. That's what Jesus said. And, and everything ceased. Everything ceased. But watch this. Build it the way that God told you to build it. That's right. His plan, your purpose. His plan is your purpose. And you got to always understand that his plan is my purpose. And if you understand that his plan is my purpose, you won't be distracted. Because I'm telling you, for you to believe that Noah didn't have any distractions around him when he was building, you, you have got to be out of your mind. You got to know what some folk walk by and say, look at Noah, this man is out of his mind. Look at this big old boat he building, talking about it's going to rain, and he know it ain't going to, man, what is rain? What is this stuff he talking about? This man out of his mind, he got his whole family, he, his whole family about to, they all about to go crazy. But watch this, watch this, watch this. This is for you, pastor. 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 This is for you, businessman. This is for you, person that's looking for all of this stuff in your life. Listen to this. When you build it, they'll come. Some of them are going to come two by two. Some of them going to come by sevens. <laughs> Okay, come on, come on. Uh, that, that's the word. That's the word. Some of them going to come two by two, and some of them going to come by sevens. That's the word. That's the word. When you build that thing correctly, some are going to come two by two, some going to come by seven. But it's going to be filled with everything that the art needs. When you build it, it's going to be filled with everything that you need. When you build it, you're going to have all the resources. You're going to have all the people. You're going to have everything that you need. When you build it, they, listen, they can't come until you build it. Can't nobody come to your business that you've never opened. Oh, come on. Can't nobody taste your macaroni and cheese that you've never baked and give, given somebody a sample of. Can't nobody read your book that you've never written. 
Can't nobody ever experience anything about what you have and you've never done it. You got to do it in order for people to experience it. And if you build it right, they'll come. Did y'all hear me? I said, if you build it right, if, if you... <laughs> If you understand, if you build according to God's plan and let God's plan become your purpose, everything you need, you're going to have. Everything you need, you are going to have it because that's what God says concerning you. And I'm telling y'all right now, man, this, this thing about this study, this virtue, and being able to tap in and knowing, having God release his plan to you in your life and then just following that plan, man, all the rest of life becomes so uncomplicated that you are going to wonder what you've been doing all of this time. It, this, this thing is like you walking in a dark room and you're unfamiliar with the room and you start tripping over stuff, but all of a sudden somebody turns on the light and now you can see everything. That's how it is when you follow God's plan. When you follow God's plan. I'm trying to look. I got five minutes. I got, I got, I got one more thing I got to tell y'all about following God's plan. Listen, uh, I hope my wife don't mind me telling this. I'm not going to tell all the particulars. I'm just going to tell it to y'all in a way that, that y'all will understand this thing. So when I'm, following, when I'm following God's plan, I cannot let other people distract me. When I'm following God's plan, I can't let other people distract me because if I, if I let people distract me for one day, what I'm building is going to go unbuilt. Okay. I, I, that, that's simple. If I keep letting you, if I, if I let you distract me for one day, you'll have the power to distract me for two days. Didn't Nehemiah say when he was built, didn't he say to Sanzbalat and Tobiah when he was building a wall, I, I'm doing a good work. I can't come down off of this wall. And, and plus this foolishness that y'all want me to come down for, it ain't even worth me coming down for. So, so listen to this. Listen to this. Follow the instructions that your man or woman of God is giving you concerning the things that are concerning you. And if you have questions, go talk to them. There are so many people that are trying to get their knowledge from the street and from people who don't know God, about God, who don't know God. If I were you, I would quiz them first. I would ask, I would ask them a very, some basic things. Like, what's your favorite scripture? And then they say, well, I like all of them. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, what's your favorite one? Well, tell me your favorite one. Because if you, you tell me your favorite one, and then listen to this. Where is it in the Bible? What chapter? What, what book? What chapter? What verse? Because I need to know if you're spending any time in the Word. Because I'm telling you right now. See, people are getting all their knowledge from the street. And then the street is messing people up. Mm. Mm. Street is messing people up. You, you hearing something in church. If you don't know, go talk to the people who spoke it. All, all right. Last thing. Last thing. I, I told my church Wednesday. I told my church Wednesday. I said, y'all better get this. I said, if, if a painter paints a picture, especially y'all see this art behind me. Y'all can see the bottom part of this art behind me right there. The bottom part of that art. It, it is some kind of artwork. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it means. Is this on the wall? Somebody probably looked at it who purchases for this hotel and said, this would be good to hang on the wall. This is a pretty picture. Now, I can stay here and try and interpret that for you. I can look at that. I can try and interpret that for you. But watch this. It would be better if I went to the person who painted the picture, the one who created it, and asked them what they were creating. What did they mean? Because I can stay here, you, I can get a group of y'all to come in here and we can stand around and as the authority, I can tell you what I think that picture means. But watch this. God don't even leave that to chance with us. He's the creator. If you got a problem, he says, ask me. How many times you need to ask? Keep on asking me until you get it. He said, I'll give you all the wisdom you need. Just keep on asking me. Keep on asking me. Keep on asking me. Because it's better to ask the creator than somebody who has an opinion. Oh, my God. So if people can't give you advice out of the word of God, you're not getting the truth. You're getting somebody's opinion. Now, don't, don't get that confused with application because I could, I could give you the word and I could tell you how I apply it. That's my application after I get a correct interpretation. But don't, don't, don't just get people's opinion when they be like, well, I believe that you ought to do such and such. And it don't line up with the word. It don't line up with the word. 
Then you're just getting somebody's opinion. And you can't build correctly with somebody's opinion. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. I'm done because breakfast is starting. Amen. Y'all have a blessed day. I'm telling you right now, man, you need to get to 124 Mendel Parkway. Lighthouse International Fellowship Church. Lighthouse International Church. 124 Mendel Parkway, Montgomery, Alabama. It may you need to get here. I'm telling you, man. Powerful teaching. Powerful teaching. And I like the way our apostle did it this year. He said, Look, I'm not so much concerned about you being preached to and being churchy. I'm more concerned about you being taught and learning. And man, when I tell you learning is going forth, teaching is going forth, learning is going forth, the word, I'm telling you, the word I heard last night challenged me. And I'm telling you, it has changed the way I view our ministry at Eastgate. And man, we're about to come back and make some positive changes. And we about to go ahead and go and move on to this, this other level that we need to be on. Man, we're about to go and do this thing. I'm just telling y'all right now, man, you need to get here. And if you can't be here, you need to purchase the tapes, the materials, whatever they have, you need to invest in it for you and your church. And if you are a fellowship church, man, you should have sent in your $150, uh, your $150 seed of your fellowship church, and you should register for the conference. Those things you should do. That's the investment you should make in the fellowship. Tonight, 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 becoming the church and the power fellowship. I'll see y'all at six o'clock at 124 Mendel Parkway. The convocation, kingdom agenda, gathering of eagles. I'll see you there. God bless you.